Uh, yesterday, one of the big stories was what happened with the Wells Fargo, the banking giant. Uh, they have to turn over a large amount of money in settlement, about $185 million. They fired over 5,000 employees. What was going on? Well, in order to boost sales figures, they started uh, opening up accounts. Fake accounts. And funding and them by transferring money from customers' authorized accounts without their permission. That was the charge by the Consumer fin uh, Financial Protection Bureau. And also, L.A. City got involved, the officer of the control of the currency, uh, so, and also L.A. City officials. So if you had a bank account with Wells Fargo, let's say you had $3,000 in the account. They took the 3000 out and put it in another account. And if it was a checking account, then your check would uh, hit overdraft status, and they charge you a penalty for that. Yeah, because sometimes they give you overdraft protection, but that would show up. Within, and sometimes they opened up credit card accounts on people and didn't even know that was going on. It was all to meet, to meet sales goals. There were a lot of pressure, apparently. A million and a half fake bank accounts and half a million credit card accounts that nobody asked for. And it looks as if they're so fanatically greedy at, at these banks, they put tremendous pressure on people. And, you know, shockingly, every, I guess almost everyone gives in to the pressure. They'd rather do something that's wrong or illegal then say, no, I'm not doing that, and I don't care if you get mad at me. I'm not doing this work. It's wrong. Nobody, nobody says that. Everybody's so coward, so cowed by their, uh, by their supervisors. Our guest. What a weak, spineless uh, species we've become. Wants to remain anonymous. He emailed us yesterday and said, uh, the news that we heard about Wells Fargo spread throughout the banking industry. We all spent time at Wells Fargo. The cheers that followed were amazing. We all shook our head and wondered why it took so long for this to come to light. I can talk about it as I was essentially fired and blacklisted for not doing this. And by the way, he also sent us an article from 2010 from Bloomberg News. And I'll just read you the first paragraph as sort of proof of what he's going to tell us and what was going on. Bank of America Corp and Wells Fargo and Company are pushing their customers to buy more brokerage, savings, and banking services from them as the weak economy and new regulations make it harder to earn money from loans and investment banking. That's a six-year-old story, but you could imagine if that's if it's been going on this long or even longer, how bad it got. So let's uh, let's get anonymous. That doesn't want his name used on the show. Welcome. How Good are afternoon, you? gentlemen. Doing well, yourselves. So give us a, a background of your experience in the banking industry, without giving oh, away who you are. Yeah. No problem. Uh, you know, I, I started at Wells Fargo at, in 2005, and uh, stayed until t 2008. Okay. Now, let, let, let me say this. We are not cowards. We do not, we do not want to stand up to our bosses because if we stand up to our bosses, we have many upon many people that their lives are at stake, their jobs are at stake. And if we speak up, we're hammered down. It's kind of like a nail sticking up. You must remove the nail. That's how it works. Did you engage in any of these practices that were alleged uh, in this case? So, so let, let me give you... Everything that's going on, let me give you the spectrum. You have a spectrum of very honest, ethical person, okay? Then you have the other spectrum. People open up accounts, don't tell customers. It's very easy to do. Uh, there's gray area. There's the gray area of, will I do this? Will I do that? That's, that's up to the individual person. Me, myself, and I, I played in the gray area. I have personal ethics and integrity that I will not go above and open up accounts for people. And so other people that did, I had spoke up about it. I was talking about it because let, let me give you the scenario. Okay. You're at your, you're at your bank. You're at your desk. You're trying to make sales. It was required two in 10 and everybody out there right now listening that worked at Wells Fargo knows exactly what I'm talking about. Two in 10, two checking accounts with 10 products. What is a product? It's a debit card, credit card, online banking, bill pay, uh, check card rewards. It's all sorts of different products along with two checking accounts per day. Now the question is, two checking accounts, how many accounts can you open up with people just walking into the bank? Well, not many people walk into the bank, even in 2005. 2006, less and less people walk into the bank. Even to this day, not many people are walking to the bank. Because of online banking, everything gets more automated. But we make phone calls, we try to sell more, and we get more sales over the phone. That's the ethical way. But pretty soon it gets harder and harder. But for some reason, 
your colleagues, they make their sales and you don't. Mm. Now you have zero and zero. You have zero checking accounts, zero products. Okay? You, you follow me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, 4 p.m. rolls around. You still have zero products and zero checking accounts. You are mandated by the company to be on a conference call with your boss, your boss's boss, and everybody else in your region that was not making their sales. Okay, no problem. Now you're on conference call. They say, okay, why did you not make sales? Well, you explain why you not make sales. And then they say, okay, how are you going to make sales? Okay, you explain. And then they say, okay, two hours, you join conference call again, and you tell us how you did. Two hours, you're pushing and pushing for sales for, from everybody that comes into the bank. By 6 o'clock, you're on conference call once again, okay? And they Wait, say, can I ask you, can I, let me ask you, what, what is, is that all they do? Is they just say, well, why don't you make sales? I don't understand what people are supposed to do. If you have a product that people don't want or don't need, there's nothing a salesman could do unless they get into uh, uh, scamming. Let me ask you, you have checking account, no? Personal checking yes. account. Yes. Well, why would I need anything more than just a checking account and a savings account if I'm, a, if I'm an average person? What, well, all these products would... you're talking about, no, why you, do I need you them? Get a, you can get a credit card. Maybe you're selling stuff nobody needs. No, well, that's very true, but why don't you have your expense account? Why don't you have one for your operating account, one for your expense account? Why don't you also have a checking account for your utilities that you only write checks? Because after all, if somebody steals your checks through the mail, <laughs> they now have your account number, and that's only one. So yeah, right but that, there, that, I, I'm sure accounts. you got a hundred of these, but it's all nonsense. They're, they are nonsense. That is the problem. Okay, you follow? So that is the problem. So now you're on conference call, 6 o'clock. Now you, after hours, they force you, if you don't make your sales, you have to now make cold calls until 8 o'clock. You are forced to stay after. Of course, you get overtime, no problem. But if you don't make those sales, you are now on cold, new cold call. Oh, so now you, now you annoy people at, the, at their homes while they're having dinner. Exactly. To try to sell me a, uh, a separate account for my utility bills. Exactly. 8.30 a.m. Oh, the next morning, you're, you're now on new conference call. How did the call night go from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m.? And if you still didn't make sales, you say, okay, I didn't make sales. Okay, how are you going to make 4 and 20 today? Because it's a new day. Okay? Yeah. I, I could so do, now you know what? I could not do this account. job for one day. Not one day could I do your job. Well, we were fresh out of college. We had our degrees. We didn't know better. better. And this was 2005 to 2008. What is in the media right now is 2011 to 2015. That is not correct. It goes further back. Now, here, let me... Let me. Uh, hey, actually, hang on. We're going to get more from you in a moment. What you're listening to is somebody who wishes to remain anonymous who emailed us yesterday concerning the whole Wells Fargo scam where they agreed to pay $185 million for fake accounts that were set up and they fired over 5,000 employees. And he was just talking to us because he spent some time at Wells Fargo. 2005 to 2008, and he's saying it got worse after he left, and he's still in the banking industry, that, that it was pressure, pressure on the people that work there to sign up people for more Wells Fargo products. And, and I think what he was trying to say, John, when he couldn't do it by people walking in the door by cold calling, probably the next step people took was to just take existing customers and sign them up for fake accounts just to meet this quota and stop, you know, all the harassment. Right. It's, it's, and the whole, thing, the whole thing is garbage from top to bottom. All right, he'll elaborate on it when we come back. John and Ken, KFI. And Nether Jordan is news. John and Ken Show, John Cobell, Ken Shampoo, KFI, AM 640. We're talking with a man who used to work in the banking industry. He wants to remain anonymous. And he is uh, confirming uh, from his personal experience what was going on at Wells Fargo for years. And it led to a $185 million multiple fine that they had to pay to various uh, government agencies. More than 2 million accounts. Wells Fargo employees may have opened for customers without their knowledge or permission. That is just a stunning number. That's as many as 565,000 credit card accounts and perhaps 1.5 million checking and savings accounts just in the last five years. And they took the money from your existing account and put it into the new account. And you didn't know about it. And it's all to boost sales numbers because of this uh, sick culture that Wells Fargo has and... Uh, our guest says other banks have the same culture as well. It's all the same people. Who right, move let's you know, let's get Anonymous back on. And uh, he was telling us uh, sort of in a step-by-step -step process how, you know, if people don't come in the door, you can't get new sales that way. And then you do cold calling, and it's hard to get sales that way. He was there from 2005 to 2008. All right, tell us more. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let me tell you, 
you you say these numbers like they're big numbers. This is just scratching the surface, okay? 130 million. Do your research on HSBC. They didn't even do a slight like that, and they pay billion dollar fine. Okay. Now, with all that said, all right, you can't make sales. How do we make new sales? We call people. We try to do it ethically, but then we can't do it. We get the pressure. Okay, we understand. Now we start getting a little bit grayer. Somebody comes in with problem with their account. They can't do something. No problem. We close your account. We open up new one. There's a sale. All new sales. We get debit card. We get new savings account. We get everything. Okay. The client is there. Perfect. Signature. Agreement. Okay. Some people get really creative and start getting more rare. They go to the, uh, what, what you call it, the swap meet. They find illegal aliens. You know, illegal aliens. People who do not have a social security number, they sign them up. They take them in. You get new checking account and more sales because they can do express send. They can send money to Mexico. And so it is perpetual in the gray area and gets so bad to the point where somebody says, you know what, no problem. I can't get a sale. There's ways to do it. You say, okay, I'm calling to verify your address because because we set you up with new checking accounts. Here is your address so-and-so. You go fast enough, people just think that you're verifying their address from the bank. No problem. You get a new account. But you don't say you get a new account. You say, we need to verify your address for a new account. And is this your address? And then they say, yes, go ahead. That's agreement. As long as you have agreement, no problem. Oh, oh, wow. That is shifty. And... Now, we have the fraudulent accounts. We have express send accounts, people with items. Now, let's talk about the sales culture. January jumpstart. Okay, this was something that was adopted uh, before I started in 2005. But on January, the very first day of work in January, you must walk in the door with minimum 10 checking accounts. Okay? Now, with 10 checking accounts, that could be your friends, family, coworkers, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. You get your 10 checking accounts, you walk in the door. Now, I've seen personally one person with over 60 checking accounts with no money in there, and then three months later, still no money, and they closed them out. He was a friend. They still get their 60 sales. They're happy because they don't have to be on conference call. They don't have to do anything else. Well, who's, whose name was on these 60 accounts? Uh, maybe a friend. So, and, and he just opens up 60 accounts for the friend? Just for the friend, just to right. put up the numbers. Wow. Then, were they funded? No, they weren't funded. But the other thing that they might do, now, of course, that's gray area because they get the okay from the friend, but 60 accounts for one friend, no problem because you get okay. Now, some other people get it very wrong. But the they bank's not account. making any money on 60 empty accounts. Yeah, well, they're not funded. What, What's wait, the point? What, what are they selling here? What's the sale? For the people who don't know that they have accounts, they go overdraft. People come in and say, well, I didn't authorize this account. Yeah, but you're overdrawn. You need to pay it. We'll reverse two, maybe three months for you. How do you overdraw on an account you don't know you have? Fees, of course. You have monthly fees. If you don't oh, have the geez. minimum balances of five hundred, a thousand dollars, you get the. Now, this is all personal accounts. This also stems to business accounts and also investment accounts. I worked with the investment accounts. We were pushed to sell A shares in two thousand. I, I mean, now I understand how the bank was making money because uh, it just seemed like. It was just empty paper shuffling, but now oh, fees. If you, yeah, you you charge fees for all these empty accounts that people don't know they have. Oh, but wait! Now you have overdraft accounts. Oh, by the way, your checking account comes with a credit card. Credit card overdraft protection. Now you have overdraft, and it it transfers, if I remember correctly, in one hundred dollar increments at a cash advance rate of twenty percent from the credit card to the checking account. And you never know, because it's just a zero dollar. You go overdrawn by $100, zero dollars makes it even. When, you go when, again. We, we got we got to go in, in just 30 seconds. When did you feel too dirty to continue doing this? When they told me to open up accounts, investment accounts, and transfer money into investment accounts. And I said, no, I won't do this. They said, well, we might have to investigate you. <laughs> they tried to investigate me, and I say, I quit. Forget about you. And so... On my U5, my Series 766 license, it says that I was investigated. I can no longer be stockbroker to this day. This, well, is, well, this is Wells Fargo. This is Wells Fargo, 2008. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for uh, sharing all this with us. We really appreciated it, Anonymous.
this is only the, the, the surface. Now these management, the management gets promoted for good sales, and now they've gone to other banks. Other banks are following the same way, the same sales culture, especially in the retail bank. All right, thanks for coming on. And uh, that's something else that was pointed out. How many of these 5,300 employees that were fired yesterday were any of these executives who pushed this stuff on the employees no. beneath them? The executives never get it. But this is, this is, these are a bunch of psychos. Uh, and you know what? This is, this is classic modern uh, economy. None of these people, all these people have fake jobs. They're not producing anything of value. There's no real product here that you can touch. There's no service here that you can use. And how many thousands, tens of thousands of people are earning a living at a fairy dust? All right, more coming up. Johnny.